morning knitters. Welcome to PJ Knits, my podcast about knitting. I'm so glad you stopped by. My name is Penny. I live in central Illinois and I'm a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster. And for the most part, everything you're going to see on this podcast will be about knitting, except for a little bit of the weather. In central Illinois, it is, let's see, 73 degrees and sunny and with a chance of rain all week. So <laughs> I had to get this in this morning um, before the sun goes away and before I head out to the riverfront to do Tuesday morning knitting. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, later in the week, it's going to get hot. So I think summer has made up its mind and it's here to stay. So anyway, welcome along to my knitting adventure. Thank you so much for joining me. And I, um, I'm just going to ask a favor. Well, a couple of favors. Tell a friend if this podcast inspires you. Um, like the video, if you would, and subscribe so we can get some more subscribers. I have a blog, which is www.pjknits.blogspot.com, where I also talk about knitting and family stuff and weather and, and birds and whatever else is out <laughs> and out and about. Um, and we have a Ravelry group, which is PJ Knits, where you can post your finished objects and talk about some of the KALs that we have going on along. So let's get started with the knitting. I did something um, about two or three weeks ago. I went upstairs. Well, first of all, I took out, and you, those who watched me before know I have several fire, files. And I took out my sweater project spring summer. And I had accumulated some sweater patterns in it that I really wanted to knit from my library, mostly for 2021 as part of the Top This KAL. Um, Top This 2021 KAL, which is all about knitting sweaters before the seasons are over with so that we can wear them in the season. Um, so anyway, I took my notebook and I looked at it and I looked at the patterns that I had, my um, folder, and then I took, um, <laughs> because I like making lists, I took my legal pad and I listed each one that I thought I might want to knit for spring summer knitting. Then I went to my knitting stash upstairs and I have a wonderful stash. And one of the other things that I really wanted to do for 2021 is to knit out of my staff stash whenever possible. So what I did is I started making lists of possible yarns that would go with each of the um, sweater patterns that I had in my library that had potential. And so what I did is I have this basket that I bought years ago at the Peoria Civic Center at a quilt function, I think it was where they had some shopping and I bought this basket. And so what I decided to do was to take my basket and pull out some of the summer yarns that I would like to knit. And so I put them into this basket and then I have taken my little sweater project file and kind of married up some of possible yarns. And I'm gonna share those with you today. Now, first up, is one that I have talked about before, back in um, episode 57, which is um, Perfect Summer Tea by Janice Thicker Designs. And here's her. For some reason, I'm having a hard time navigating this morning on this. But anyway, I wanted to do this particular one. And so I went to my stash and I found this one that I bought from Fiber Universe probably three or four years ago with the intention of knitting some sort of um, uh, tank top out of it and then decided that wasn't really wanted, what I wanted to do. So I happened upon this Bio Bimbo and I think now um, Taki Stacy Charles is making this. So. I decided to use this for my summer tea and I cast on one and 
And so this is the progress on it. Now, I love that this is striping, and I must have had a thing about stripes, striped yarn unintentionally. I really didn't know that this was going to stripe this much, but I'm loving this. And what I decided to do to make it just a little bit different, because it seems so plain to me, and I needed a little bit of something, I decided to do a little slip stitch down the front. So I'm doing that as I come around, just to give it a little bit of vertical line to break up the stripes. And so I think you can see the striping better on the back. So this is what I'm using, what I'm doing right now for my summer sweater. And I thought that would be fun to do and to continue on. Now it's on a size, uh, um, I'm on a size three needle. Um, the pattern called for a size five needle and I still was not making gauge on a size three needle. So, but I decided I was not going down any further than that. Um, that would be just too much for the hands. So when I, as I progress down, it's a top down, as I progress down the sweater, I will make modifications as I generally do on my sweaters and maybe go up a needle size through the hip if I need it. But anyway, that's one of the things that I'm going to, that I'm working on currently for our Top This 2021 KAL which goes through September and we're doing the summer season sweaters. So please join us in the Ravelry group on Instagram doing the hashtag. Let us know what you're knitting for summer sweaters if you're knitting for summer sweaters. So then the next yarn that I had in my uh, thought process was another one that I bought years ago at Knit 4 Together when they were in. And it's Duo Plus Comfort by Adria Feel. Adria Fee. And I found out by looking at Ravelry that this also stripes. So my original intention for this one was going to be over the top. Over the top. <laughs> by Heidi Kermeyer. And what I decided is I really, the two of these yarns were not conducive to the yarn and the pattern were not conducive. So anyway... I've kind of scrapped this particular one, but something else I had in my yarn stash was another yarn that I bought on a knit away many years ago in Indy, which was a bamboo pop. And I think that I will have enough for it. And so my intention is maybe to do over the top out of this. So there's a kind of sort of a thought plan for that. My next one that I had in my pattern, and I bought a lot of this at the time, and this is Cotton Nation, and it's a ribbon-like yarn, as you can see. I made a top, um, um, three-quarter sleeve top, out of this that just needs to be sewn together when I first bought the yarn. But I had found this pattern in um, a bin somewhere, and here we go. Isn't it perfect? So I'm thinking that I have enough of these two, and they will be um, a future summer sweater as well. And then the next one that I had in my um, stash is called Sea Pearl. And this is by Briar Rose Fibers. And this particular yarn is going to be discontinued. And I have a, a pavement out of it. And I love this. Originally, I bought enough for this to be um, another sweater. I cannot remember which one it was. I bought enough of it. And the sweater style was just not conducive to me. And I have, so I have plenty of yardage. And this is kind of a gray, so it really will be a dressier sweater. And my intention, I believe now, is going to be Tegna. And I will, of course, make modifications because that is too short for me. I'll make it longer. And then um, 
I definitely some longer sleeves. I will, I will think I don't tell very well. Let's see. There we go. So I'll probably make it a little bit longer, and definitely I will have more um, room in my arms. So, um, and then. Finally, one of the yarns that I bought um, recently at Fiber Universe was a new one that just came out. It's a Dream in Color Smooshy. I've talked about this before. Um, originally, this one was going to be Summer Sorrel. And I even cast on this particular sweater. But I just felt like the yarn was too soft. And the other thing was, I just wasn't... My frame of mind at the time was not into doing the lifted stitches that are here. So I'm setting this one aside for possibly later, but definitely not out of my dream in color smooshy yarn. This is just too soft of a yarn. Um, I just wasn't feeling it. So I have kind of on the radar um, decided that it may be a material girl. And this is another pattern by um, Shana Bilo, or Billo. And I tend, I, I'm knitting on something else that I'll share with you. And so I'm loving her, her patterns, but I think the two of these would go really well together. There we go. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking those two want to be together. Now, do I have any particular order of when these are going to be done? Not at this time, I do not, but one never knows. Um, so that is kind of my plan for summer knitting for the top of this 2021 KAL that is going on through September. And I hope you'll join us. Um, like I said before, um, just because it's summer doesn't mean you can't wear your sweaters. Okay, whips. On the Shana Billow um, bandwagon, a few weeks back we were over um, seeing our grandchildren and our oldest grandchild daughter brought out her uh, poncho that she had some time ago that I had knit for and it's getting a little short and and someone else remarked that maybe she needed a new one and so I decided when I got home she has a birthday coming up that maybe she did need a new one she's very knit worthy and this is the pattern basic children's poncho by Shana Bilo Bilo we're gonna have to figure out how to pronounce her name this is a free pattern and I highly recommend it because it's, it's really nice. I take it to the riverfront to knit on. It's fun to knit on there and um, easily done in public. And so I have one of those. I just want to show you the yarn I used is out of uh, a yarn that unfortunately is being discontinued right now. It is Jelly Beans by Plymouth. And I had a stash of it. And I, I knit a baby afghan out of it, plus then I have enough for this and probably another, enough for my uh, youngest granddaughter. But here is the patterning that's happening on that. And so I'm just loving this little poncho to, for her. She, um, she's so, like I said, she's so knit worthy. Whenever we're over there, she always brings out her knits and wears them. She has a blanket that I knit for her when she was a baby that she sits on. Um, in her little reading area, and so um, it just warms a grandmother's heart to um, be able to um, knit for, for uh, grandchildren and, and to see them wearing them. So I'm super, super pleased about that. So next up is books and bags, and we're going to start with a couple of books that um, this one has been out there and this uh, for over a year, and then the second volume came out. This is the Shetland Jur Wool Adventures Journal. This is number one, and this is number two. And both of these can be purchased through Schoolhouse Press. That's where I purchased this one. My original one I did right from the source, but now that uh, Schoolhouse Press has them, I bought it from them, and it's all about Shetland, and I've talked about that before. Uh, Shetland is definitely on my bucket list. It has stories, features, about it talks this um, talks about the Shetland where the movie um, the series from Britbox is um, being filmed it has some patterns in it it talks about 
you know, things on the islands. Um, it has some patterns, as I said, five or six, seven patterns in that. Um, and it just, they're, they're, it talks about a brief history of certain places, Lerwick. It's just got some great fun as if you're right there and um, walking tours um, and what to be weary of. So um, I'm just really into these books right now as my um, evening reading. So these are the Shetland Wolf Adventures journals, one and two, and you can get those from Schoolhouse Press. And my bag for this week is a little bag that our friend Allison brought us back from Malaysia. And um, she let us choose. And this is my little notions pouch that she brought back. And I just, this is so much fun. It goes in my little knitting bag for down at the riverfront. And I have my little scissors in it, a tape measure, some um, a bone crochet hook for picking up stitch markers and then a chibi needle. So this is super fun. Thank you, Allison. It's perfect, tucks right down in my current little knitting bag for on the riverfront. Okay, finished objects. I have one to share with you. I talked about this one before. This is called Sandpiper. It is by Imagine Knit Designs. And I had some yarn from a long ago stash um, boo -boo 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 -boo. Uh, baby bunny and this is part alpaca so it had it and cotton which I love and the fun thing about this originally and I decided I was going to make mine the larger size I did on a size 7 and it is as you can see from here it is sewn up part way so it makes it into um, just an overtop for a tank at the beach or just in air conditioning or whatever. But funny thing was, my friend Peggy also knit this and she left it open and did not sew it up. And I thought, what a fantastic idea. And so I am doing the same. And as you can see, I'll just stand up a little bit. Here's the look. And I think it's perfect with my new dress. But if I wanted to, I could move it over as well. And she had hers out of a lovely striping yarn. And it's a poncho. So thank you, Peggy, for that great idea. Perfect. And um, it's just what I needed and just what I wanted. So I love it. It's nice and soft. Um, I'm enjoying um, it, and I know I'm going to enjoy it all through the summer when we'll be able to get out into air conditioning places or just towards the fall. So this is Sandpiper, um, and I intend to wear it over a sundress as well, and it will cover the arms perfectly. Um, so it's a perfect summer knit and really also falls into the top this 2021 KAL. So anyway. Um, I have one mail call that I found these via the Frivolous and Frugal podcast. Um, Dawn, I believe, had purchased them, and I got um, on the horn last time I saw them, and these are from Karen's Hobby Room on Etsy, and they are monthly stitch markers, and so, progress keepers, rather, and so they have one for each of the months, and I've already put January through May on my um, mitered square blanket. That's what I'm doing right now. And at the end of each month, I put one at the last block. And that way then I can tell what blocks I have done. And in the future episode, I'll show you what I, I'll show you the progress that I've had on those. So I thought those were super cool, super fun idea. And that is um, my mail call this week, along with, I guess, my Shetland wool journal that I got. So. Coming up in a couple of weeks, we will start the summer of shawls, and I'll talk all about that on the next podcast. I have lots of um, um, shawls that I want to talk about over the summer, and that's a, a KAL that we do every summer. And there's no specific shawl this year for you to knit on your, you know, knitter's choice. 
And so I'm looking forward to that too, because that's some great summer knitting. So as you can tell, from all the things that I've shared today, I have a lot of knitting on my place plate. For some reason, I'm having trouble doing the words today. Yeah. This happens when I try to hurry the podcast. And so um, I, I have to chill and not hurry and not rush so much. So anyway, also in a couple of weeks, some friends are coming into town. We've got a girl's runaway to Peoria. And I am so looking forward to seeing them all from... Um, all over um, the United States, central to eastern, let's say that. And um, we're going to have a grand old time. We're going to show them the city and um, going to have some fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Maybe, maybe they'll even podcast with me. Wouldn't that be fun? So just think about that, girls. <laughs> so anyway, thank you again so much for joining me. Um, it gives me pleasure to share my knitting with you. And I hope that you're inspired by some of the things that I've talked about today. So until next time, knit on with confidence and hope. Hey, listen to the world, but then write your own story, guys. Talk at you later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.